Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Mokona Man at YouTube with a, another model review. Today we're going to be building the Kota Bakia Frame Arms Girl in Ascentia, a part of my Easter weekend campaign uh, stream a fun. Uh, what I did was uh, did an endurance build to see how much of this kit, if possible, finish it within a four day period of uh, time off, as well as streaming for long periods of time. This model is a later release, seven sets of runners, a few plastic bags with uh, pre-colored, pre-painted bits and pieces. Uh, colourful instructions are uh, very clearly outlining how to assemble the model as well as step-by-step -step, uh, methods of uh, modifying or changing parts around. I find the other more harder or larger kits tend to be a bit more um, long-winded and easy to burn out as you're expected to build the base model and then later on it shows you what you can build to carry on. Uh, this one it gives you a tree of go to this page, this page or this page to do the certain variants that you want. I hope that uh, gets kept around and a bit of a parts list as well as water slide decals for eyes and a couple of warning stickers. The instructions also showcases some aftermarket parts or sets you can buy to add on and do various variations. Uh, the golden idea of this set is also for heavy customization. It's uh, very, very basic and there's quite a few people that do everything from treat it like dolls and create uh, clothing out of cloth for it all the way to attaching Gundam or tank parts to it. My goal is an out of the box color scheme as depicted on the box art and potentially uh, how it may look from the anime itself being released around this time of the video being made. The first kit I made was first release Gorai. It's a couple of years old. Kota Bakir is known to be a hit and miss when compared to uh, much more premium brands of kits. Though I found this to be absolutely exceptional and quite a few improvements from Gorai. Uh, a few notes when you snap it together, it stays snapped so you probably want to loosen the pegs before closing the gap or when you glue it down, it just stays down period. Uh, some of the seams are very, very well uh, hidden. I think it's a bit easier to do with the mechanical parts um, that are from the more built-up models. Uh, this being a base model probably is a tad more trickier, though nothing you can't really deal with. The instructions also shows you the line art of uh, the model, and the line art also includes where the seams are likely going to appear, which gives you indication uh, what would be appropriate to fill and what would not. As well as some very, very, very clever sliding molds examples in the look of some of these runners. Uh, the colour separation, uh, there is a bit of masking required around the uh, torso or hand painting. And uh, most of it being snapped together. Uh, very, very happy how it came together. When it comes to painting, some of the tiny joints like the pigtail or the wrist does get a bit gunked up and uh, tricky to stick together and masking of joints should be considered as well as assemble than uh, paint rather than your old fashioned gunpla approach of paint all the parts and assemble. Uh, there is a lot to think about um, how to build it, how to paint it, what stages and what should be assembled and what shouldn't be. When done, following as closely as I can to the box art, I was left with a sandwich bag full of assorted parts, extra heads, extra eyes, extra whole set of hair. If it came with a second torso, you could probably pull two figures out of it, but they may sell less for some reason. Keep these around if you want to build another Mecha Masume, if you can acquire a Figma or something of the same 112th scale. There is also a whole runner dedicated to um, a set of arms and legs in black for those who don't want to paint. The snap model looks exactly as advertised and quite well. Uh, no obvious gaps, uh, paint areas where there should be. Most of it is color separated, uh, very cute. 
practically of the uh, same quality I would expect from a Figma or certain fully articulated 112th scale uh, figures. So it's uh, very suitable for toy collectors, uh, not too hard to snap together as well as modelers. And there's so many extra parts that you can attach on weapons or just general modification. It's also a good base to start working from this point. Uh, forward from the model, we're going to be painting. Now, the figure can't stand on its own with the bare feet. The uh, heels and ball of the foot is curved and requires a stand or a very awkward position that is advertised to stand on its own. I decided to whip up a base using a tall geese shield from a old high grade or no grade. The model was then disassembled and sorted out in appropriate colours with uh, some runners kept aside for the idea of uh, matching colours or brainstorming some colours. Various lacquer paints, mostly Mr. Color, some SMS were gathered and ready for painting. Everything was mounted by the peg or onto blue tack on skewers and white primer by Tamir was applied. Part by part or collection of colors, I would uh, give it a base coat and then lighten it or dark it with other tones and add a few effects. Uh, the hair was a lot of fun trying to get that really light purple grey by mixing a few drastic colours and shading on top of each other. The uh, red bits were just a straight red and shaded ever so slightly for tone given a high gloss using Future. Uh, the white was grey brought up to white. Uh, flesh started off as uh, sand going down to flesh then character flesh blushing in some areas was very very uh, playful some parts had um, a few hand painted uh, glints as it is matte but shown to have some sort of light reflecting off it uh, there was a bit of hand painting as well around uh, the underwear region and some of the armor bits as well as the chest I did forget to mention after the priming section I had a day in between uh, this had a chance to putty up so many faults or imperfections that came up, sanded it the next day. Most of it was alright. After painting there was one error with the uh, crutch section. This was uh, sanded back and repainted the next day with a bit of masking. And both was uh, quite successful. After refining the base, that was also painted red. And on the final day, the red armor bits as well as the base was sludged wash with SMS black wash. There was a bit of uh, top coating. Uh, the model was assembled using PVA glue as it dried clear with a slight uh, gloss tone. And um, one of the pigtails did break and fall off. And this was permanently super glued in place. Uh, one foot was super glued to the base for balance. And she just came together really, really well. During the time that I streamed, I probably streamed about seven hours every day, except for day three and day four. Day three a little longer, day four uh, significantly shorter. The model, which was uh, timed, took a total of 25 hours from breaking out the runners to final assembly. Very happy uh, meeting my goals of uh, the streaming process the timing it all together, the speed build over four days that I relatively wasn't working or had any sort of uh, responsibilities and just had a uh, full model jump out. Now there's a couple of refinement issues. I think she could be a little better in a couple of the um, toning and freehand airbrushing areas and probably slightly neater without um, one or two tiny micro faults. Uh, probably polishing of the armor so it's a lot shinier small amount of modification a more inclusive uh, base some me mechanical components maybe a weapon but uh, in the short period of time aiming for out of the box really happy it uh, does pop it looks as it's supposed to via the box art she was a bit hard to put in um, a position that's convincing according to the box art though I think uh, the photos kind of get it uh, just right 
She uh, suits the Gorai very, very well as they're both similarly modelled and uh, painted. Very happy to put this on display, online, competitions, whatnot. A uh, bit of a uh, proud achievement as uh, the last Frame Arm Girl was about uh, six to nine months to do. This was a lot shorter by um, all means. This gives me a few things to think about my modelling. Uh, definitely a lot more comfortable around flesh, figures, neatness and uh, especially around the whole Frame Arms Girl as the last one did take uh, a very long time. Had a lot of fun, definitely dig it, definitely highly recommend buying a Frame Arm Girl and doing whatever your heart desire does on them. They're very flexible, they're very high tech, they're very very fun. And all in all that concludes this build. Thank you very much for watching. As always, until next time, stay tuned for further content. Have a look at uh, Facebook and some other uh, revenue. This might be a chance to follow me on Twitch the next time I start doing some um, streams sometime down the road or some sort of special event. And I'll uh, leave you guys to it. Leave a comment. Happy to answer questions in the comment section. Catch you later.